Good morning and welcome to the Springfield Sunday service for the 6th of March. As you can see, um, we're not in the building and that's because yesterday at the service we had a slight uh, technical problem with the YouTube, so I'm uh, re-recording the sermon for you now. And I'm going to start off by, by saying that the service and this message is the first in a new series we're starting uh, in the book of James, looking through the book of James. And I just want to say as we as we start off, I absolutely love book series. I, I love all of the messages that we do here, but I particularly love the series where we go through a book verse by verse. And so I want to encourage you as as, as we begin, uh, as we begin this series and as we begin this message, have a Bible in front of you. We're going to be looking at the letter that James wrote, um, the book of James. Now, digital Bibles are brilliant. You can do loads of stuff with them. You have them wherever you go. But paper Bibles are even better. But just have something in front of you because over the next four weeks together and then in five weeks uh, during June, we're going to dig right into the book of James really deep. And it would be helpful for you to underline, to circle, to write notes. And, and if you write in a journal, that's the kind of thing. Bring two to church and, and have in front of you. Because I really believe with all my heart that God is going to use this and he's going to speak to each of us. So let's jump in. We're starting at James chapter 1 verse 1 and, and it's really going to help frame this whole series for us. And it says this, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. And I should just say at this point, I'll, I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. So that's James verse 1. James is so humble. He says uh, he's a slave of God or a, a servant uh, of Jesus. And and I think this book, this letter is so easy to receive because James is a humble person. But just remember for a second who the guy that's writing this is. This is James, the brother of Jesus. He calls himself a servant, but actually he's very influential. In fact, if I was the brother of Jesus, I'd have probably have name dropped that right at the beginning of a letter. He, he would have grown up uh, in and around Jesus, you know, like brothers do. And, and I think this tells us even more about Jesus, actually. Because if you've got a brother or a sister, what would it take for you to believe that your sibling is the Christ, God's anointed one? Just, just think about it. James saw Jesus grow up. And then he saw him preach and heal and pray and get crucified and, and buried. And actually, it took Jesus coming back to life for James to believe in Jesus. But here James calls himself a slave or a servant to his brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. And James is also the leader of a church in, in Jerusalem. So he is a big deal. And yet he writes this humbly. And, and this next part, I think... Uh, a few years ago, we would have just skipped over to get to the meat of, of what James is writing about. James says, I'm writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Now, James is, is pastoring a church that can no longer meet together like it used to. Does that sound vaguely familiar to anyone? And definitely to those of you watching this online, this entire book is aimed at Christians scattered around who are living out their faith and struggling to live out their faith because things have changed, things are different, things are a challenge. It's written to people like us in a moment like ours. Is anyone else excited about what God wants to say to us in this moment? And James starts this letter off um, as a good pastor, uh, focusing on trials and temptations. And that's what we're going to be looking at now. To the scattered believers, the first thing James talks about is trials and temptations. And we're all living in this reality. Because over the past two years, we have faced probably one of the biggest trials we're ever going to face in our, life, in our lifetime. Coming face to face with a load of temptations in and through that. And, and James wants us to know that trials and temptations, and they're different things, that they're coming. That's obvious. But he wants them and us to know how to navigate that, how to walk through that. And the headline uh, for today is this. If we don't give up, 
we win. If we don't give up, we win. So let's start with verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, James writes, whenever you face trials of many kinds. So this bit is about trials. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Now trials, they are situations that happen to us. They're, they're like we're walking down the road uh, and... Uh, and this happened to me a few weeks ago in the storms, um, walking down the road and then suddenly a bin, a big bin that's supposed to be attached to the ground flies a couple of metres in front of you and into the road and cars are swerving to miss it. <laughs> we have no control over trials. They happen to us. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe we lose our job or the boiler breaks. Trials often come out of nowhere and they happen to us. And though we didn't cause it, we've got to work through it. Now, God doesn't cause trials, but that verse 2 makes very clear that God wants to use them. And if you're writing stuff down, write this down. God wants to use trials to mature us. God wants to use trials to mature us. And if we're going to get through trials, here's a couple of things that are going to be really key. The first is that we need to get God's perspective. Did you notice how, how James starts this verse off? Consider it pure joy. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one that, that finds that a little bit weird and possibly a little bit crazy. He's asking us to consider joy something that isn't joyful. Trials are hard. Trials are not joyful. Now, do you have any friends uh, or people you know who are just happier the harder it gets type of people one of my uh, prayer triplet is is like that and and he seems to grow in joy the harder things get like he's waiting on the start line to run a marathon and he's bouncing around like tigger or uh, his car breaks down and i remember this uh, like it was yesterday because i was sitting in the car with him his car breaks down on a busy a road and his first reaction is fantastic this is a chance for god to show me his provision for God to bless me. So it is possible. But that's what James is calling us to. However hard it may seem. He's not saying that trials are going to be fun. He's not, going to, he's not saying that trials are going to be easy. You don't have a choice about your trial. But you do have a choice about your attitude. The word consider in Greek. In the Greek. It, it's, it can be kind of translated suppose. And you can read that verse verse uh, that, that verse two like this. Well, I'm in this trial, so I can be miserable, or I suppose I could let God give me joy. I don't know which side you want to be on, but I'm going to choose the joy side. If that's available, I want it. So the first thing is, get God's perspective, and it's going to be very different normally to ours. Secondly, trust God's processes. God is at work, and we have to trust it. In verse 4 it says this, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Trust God's process. He has a process that he's working through. As a parent, I'm so used to this, on the other side. Trust us, Ethan, it's for your good. You don't have all the information right now, but you're just going to have to trust me that this is going to work out. I don't know how many times I've had to say to Ethan that, that he needs to do something that he doesn't want to do because in the end it will be better for him. And his big trial at the moment is uh, is having his hair washed. Um, he absolutely hates it. He will he will just run a mile when he when he senses that the shampoo is coming out. <laughs> but he needs to trust the process. Otherwise, this is what Wikipedia says will happen. It says this, at about six months to a year of not washing hair, the bacteria would accumulate and clog up your follicles, which could lead to unwanted pimples, hair thinning, hair loss, and if you have roommates, possibly eviction. <laughs> now, I'm as a parent, I'm absolutely great at saying, trust the process, just trust us on this. You don't have any information, just trust us. But I tell you what, it's so hard the other way around when God is saying that to us. We don't always know what God knows, do we? And but the truth about trials is always this, that in trials, God wants to draw us closer to him. 
That's his purpose. That's his process. That is his big perspective. He wants to draw us closer to him. And so you know what our job is in the middle of trials, the trials that happen to us, the seasons of life that we go through. Our job is to not give up. Our job is to not turn away from God. Our job is not to say no to God, to say yes to him. Because if we don't give up, we win. So we've looked at trials and now I want to briefly look at temptations and they are different because God wants to use trials to mature us. But you need to know that every time that you're in a trial, you're going to be hit with temptations as well. And here's the big picture. God, as I said, is using trials to mature us and draw us closer to him. But Satan, the enemy, wants to use temptation to destroy us. We have an enemy, not flesh and blood. We have an enemy and he is trying to destroy us. It says this, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So let's just be clear about this. James makes it perfectly clear. God doesn't tempt us. God never tempts us. God cannot tempt us. If you've ever heard other teaching about this, then just read that that verse again. God is unable to tempt us. This is about the enemy. Trials happen to us and we don't have a lot of choice in that and we've just got to walk through them. Temptations are a bit different. Temptations happen inside us. And here's the big idea. We always have a choice what to do when we're tempted. Temptations aren't an obstacle in the road, they are a fork. We can go this way or this way. And and the enemy is trying to pull us down the wrong path. And so here's what wisdom James James gives us. And I'm going to race through these. So if you've got a pen uh, or you're making notes on your phone, write, write these down. If we don't want to go the way that the enemy is pulling us, this is what James says we should do. Firstly, understand the process of temptation. James says this, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. That's the process of temptation. If we understand the process, we can be on the offensive and not just on the defensive. So it starts off with deception. Did God really say, just take your eyes off God for a moment. Maybe my way's a better way. It starts with deception and it leads to desire, desiring those things, thinking, oh yeah, they'll be better. They, they, even though the Bible says this or, 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 um, church teaching says this, actually, I'm really feeling drawn to this. And then disobedience, that kind of active step of, of sinning, of saying, no, God, I know better. And finally, James says, when it's full grown, that sin, that that disobedience, it leads to death. I mean, we play around with sin, but it's serious. It leads to death. So that's the process. Understand the process. And then James leads us in a in a way out of this. And it starts with being real about our weakness. He says, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, temptation can happen to any one of us. In fact, it does happen to all of us. But how much do we actually talk about this in church and in our friendships and in our small groups and in our prayer triplets? We need to be honest and real about our weaknesses. The enemy knows how exactly how to tempt us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows how to lure us. But when we bring these things into the light, when we talk about them, when we are real and we share our struggles with others, that is the first step out of temptations. And the final point that James makes is is this. And if you're fans of 80s classic rock, you're going to love this one in, in a moment. So the first thing is understand the process of temptation. The second is be real about your weaknesses. And the third and final one is learn how to overcome and you can overcome. James says this in verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting uh, shadows. God is light and where light shines, darkness 
cannot exist. That is the absolute core truth of the gospel. Start of John's gospel, that's where it starts. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. And it goes on in the next verse in, in James 1 verse 18 to to say that God has given us a birth, a new birth, in contrast to the death that we looked at just a second ago that sin leads to. Life, not death. Victory, not defeat. We can, in Jesus, overcome temptation. Do not fall for that lie that you're never, ever going to be able to win, that you're never, ever going to be able to overcome. We're always going to face temptation, but in Jesus, we can overcome. We can experience victory we don't have to be embarrassed about temptation we just need to start off by inviting God into our situation light into darkness when I'm weak we can pray I'm going to invite you in God to be strong and uh, there's this little acronym um little four four things that can help us along the way four practical things that we can do to learn how to overcome and the first a avoid the situation it's it's kind of it's kind of christianity 101 isn't it avoid the situation don't put yourself in a situation where you know you're going to be tempted and we all know what our weaknesses are step away from that build accountability tell somebody you know what I really struggle with food or I really struggle with shopping or I really struggle with anxiety and these things really don't help me tell someone and build that accountability relationship avoid the situation that's the first one second one counter with the word of God the word of God is powerful we're going to look at that next week it's a weapon uh, get a verse to fight the enemy. That's what Jesus does in the desert when he's tempted. He he uses the word of God to counter the temptation. It's a powerful weapon. I remember when I was a just a six months old Christian uh, in the faith and I was really struggling with stuff. And someone told me this, uh, counter with the word of God. And I just remember before I went to sleep, because it was during the night where I, I, I really felt there was a battle going on. And I used to write down a verse before I went to sleep just from a psalm or something like that and then when I wake in the night and I feel really tempted to to really to doubt who I was and to doubt my salvation I would just read that out loud um it was and, and it changed it changed the atmosphere it changed me counter with the word of God it may seem like a really small insignificant thing but God's word is so powerful so avoid the situation, counter with the word of God. The third thing, when you're fighting temptation, develop healthy friendships. Last week, we launched uh, Pray 3 prayer triplets, just uh, offering and, and signing up for three months of being in a prayer triplet with someone. And if it works, great, carry on. Um, but that kind of close relationship of praying for one another and, and growing in prayer is also growing in a deeper relationship a deeper friendship with someone that you can be honest with and bring things into the light. Maybe uh, your connect group is the place to do that. We are not designed to be lone rangers in this. We're not designed to fight temptation by ourselves. We're designed, Jesus sent his disciples out in twos uh, and, uh, and it's so powerful walking along with somebody else, so helpful. So avoid the situation, counter with the word of God, develop healthy friendships and finally commit to prayer. This whole, uh, uh, this whole kind of uh, area of struggle is spiritual. And the spiritual weapons we have, we have the word of God and we have prayer. Pray about it. Pray about it and pray some more. Even when you're feeling on top of the world, pray against temptation. That's so, so, so important every single day. And as I was preparing this, I had this epiphany as these kind of things came out, um, as these four things uh, it, it, it is the acronym ACDC, the 80s classic rock band. And um, I, people that, that know me know that as, I, as I've become a dad um, and as I've loved being a dad over the last two and a half years, one of the things that I've really grown in is the whole area of dad jokes. Um, I feel as though it's a, a real area of growth in my life. And so here's one for you. And if you don't know ACDC or any of their songs, this is just going to go way over your head. But if you do, this is for you. If you don't want to live on a highway to hell, it's one of their songs, by the way, 
avoid the situation, counter with the word, develop healthy friendships and commit to prayer. We can stand and live in victory because if we don't give up, we win. How do we do this? How, how do we make this more than just kind of self-help? The last verse in this section, verse 18, is just what I want to close on. It says this, he chose, Jesus chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Jesus gave us birth, uh, so God gave us birth through Jesus. We didn't deserve it, but God decided to do it anyway. And, and this is the ultimate I idea, guys, that when we're struggling through trials and we're struggling through temptations, often it's because we're living on the wrong side of the cross. Even if we're Christians and followers of God, our mindset at least is, is that we're kind of out here on our own. And so we say things, I know I do, like, I'm worn out, I'm exhausted, this, this trial has beaten me down, I, I don't know if I can get through this. But we have to remember that as followers of Jesus, that's not our new reality. We have been born into a new truth. We've been reborn as a son or a daughter of God. You are a son or daughter of the living God if you've accepted Jesus Christ and you're a new creation. So here's the good news. The enemy, the one who's using temptations to try and beat you down, to try and affect and break your relationship with God, the enemy has got nothing against the power of God. The power of the enemy was broken on the cross and death no longer has any victory over us. And we need faith around this idea that we are a new creation. And when we ask for it, we can receive God's grace and his mercy. And even more of that, we, we, we get his power, the power of the Holy Spirit. He who is in us is great greater than he who is in the world and we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength where O oh, death the bible says is your victory where O oh, death is your sting if God is for me then who can be against me we have the authority Jesus says to trample on the serpent and overcome the enemy nothing in Jesus name will harm us if we don't give up we win Let's remember which side of the cross we're on. And whatever trial or temptation that you're facing, we may not have a choice about being in there, but we have a choice how to get through. In that trial, God, would you use this to mature me and draw me closer? And in a temptation, God, I know this isn't you. This is a work of the enemy, and the enemy has no power in my life because of what Jesus has done on the cross. If we don't give up, we win. Can we just pray together? Father, we, we know that this is a period of intense trial and intense temptation. At least it is for me. And Father, we know that you don't cause these things. But Lord, you, you want to use trials to draw us closer and we just say yes to that. The trials that we're in, Lord, they seem so big, they seem so hard, they are not fun at all. But Lord, help us to remember that we do have a choice in this, a choice to choose your joy, to choose your presence, to choose you. And so we say yes to you. Would you, would you mature us through this? Would you get us through this? And Lord, would you draw us close? in those trials and and father the things that we're tempted by and again you know our hearts you know our weaknesses lord we just declare that these things these temptations aren't from you you are good they are not from you they're from the enemy and father we thank you that because of what jesus achieved on the cross and in the empty tomb that the enemy has no power over us. You never tempt us. Uh, you never give us temptation. Allow us to be tempted, Lord, by things that we can't overcome in you. And so in our weakness, we invite you in, Lord, to be our strength. We pray for your forgiveness where we've, where we've fallen, where we've messed up, where we've sinned. We pray, Lord, particularly for those of us who are struggling in a sin cycle Lord, we pray that you would break that you would break those chains in the name of jesus 
the Lord, you'd help us not just understand that process of temptation, but help us help us to live in the victory of the cross. So we invite you in, God. Save us. Deliver us from our temptation, we pray. And help us, Lord, just to remember that incredible truth that if we don't give up, if we say yes to you, if we push into you, if we invite you into the situation, if we don't give up, we win because you've already won. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.